Hello everyone, today is April 19, 2017, and it is the 24th anniversary of the final day of the 1993 Waco siege. And uh, on this day, 24 years ago, the Branstivian compound, as it has been so named, was burnt down to the ground. So this is a tragedy of which we are all aware, I'm sure. And um, there's one particular element in relation to it that I want to discuss in this video. And it has to do with another tragedy, which is actually a continuing tragedy, which begun at the same point at which that 1993 tragedy came to an end. April 19 is often looked at as finally, you know, the end of this horrible standoff. And uh, it was, you know, a lot of people after that felt a sense of relief in a sense because the the tension and the expectation of what might happen was gone although it was just horrible how it ended and everyone now finally admits that it could have been avoided the whole thing could have happened so very differently and for that reason it's absolutely tragic however there is something that has continued on from that point which is just as tragic and uh, literally thousands of people are still being hurt by it. There are people being uh, subjected to abuse psychologically, verbally, uh, even physically as a result of misinformation that stems from that time back in 1993 and um, a lot of people looking back on that event, wish that they could have done something to change the outcome and avoid the deaths of all those people. And unfortunately, you know, that's past. It's too late now. It's, it's gone. Um, but today, there is this tragedy that is continuing, and we can do something to bring an end to it. But I, of course, need to explain what it is. Um, so essentially what I want to do in this video is I want to evidence for you um, the fact that the Branch Davidian identity, the corporate identity of the Branch Davidian movement, has actually been stolen in a sense. There has been an identity theft that has greatly damaged many people. And surprisingly, at least uh, to the ears of most, the theft was actually um, committed, if you will, by David Koresh, a.k.a. Vernon Howell. That was his original name himself. And I know that might sound surprising and might sound like an oddball theory or something like that, but it really isn't, and I'll, I'll evidence for you the truth of this. And um, so please consider the things that I have to put forward here. So... First thing that most people are not aware of is the fact that the Branch Davidian movement existed long before David Koresh. David Koresh was born in 1959. The Davidian movement actually started in 1929. It started in California uh, with the teachings of a man named Victor Hotif. And uh, in 1955, the Davidian movement had its name changed uh, with the addition of the branch name at the beginning. So Branch Davidian, the full name is Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventist. And uh, in 1955, that took place uh, under the leadership of another individual by the name of Benjamin L. Roden. And so he was the second leader of the Davidian movement and uh, led it from 1955 up until 1978. And uh, before he died, in 1977, his wife, Lois Roden, she actually begun teaching a message and was recognized as having a prophetic calling and co-presided over the movement for one year until her husband died in the fall of 1978. From that point, she continued on as the leader of the Branch Davidian movement up until her death in 1986. And this is all what, you know, anyone viewing this history will readily be able to see. Um, 
after that point, things become a little bit more convoluted from an outsider's perspective, trying to figure out, oh, what happened here and, uh, you know, who are the figures involved and so on. But um, interestingly, David Koresh, as I mentioned before, his uh, birth name was Vernon Howell. He did not come close to the branch movement until 1981. And even coming around in 1981, he didn't become a leader or anything like that. It wasn't until uh, 1983 that he began to teach a message and uh, essentially uh, viewed himself as a prophetic leader to succeed Lois Roden as the leader of the movement. Interestingly, though, even though that's how he viewed himself, that is not actually how everyone else viewed him. In fact, Lois Roden, who was the president of the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventist organization, opposed his message, and he opposed her message. And I will share with you some of the things that demonstrate this, although, of course, there is a lot more. Um, but in this video, I just want to give you a, a sample of the sort of thing that we have with us on record concerning that time. So, first I want to quote from a written document by Vernon Howell, aka David Koresh, um, wherein he refers to what took place uh, in 1983. And he refers to the beginning of his message, just to let you know um, kind of what he is speaking of, and he he understood his message to have begun on the Day of Atonement in 1983, so that year in September. But anyways, this is what he says in a document called The Serpent's Root, which is what he initially called his message. It's The Serpent's Root 1, page 1. You are all aware of the fact that since this message has come, opposition has arisen. Some are acting as mad men. Even our dear sister Rodin appears to be acting in such a way as to make us shiver. We are definitely living in the time of the fulfillment of Micah 7, 5. Every man for himself, so to speak. Why are sister Rodin and George acting as they are? Didn't sister Rodin tell us all to go study this message? Why then all the opposition. So, of course, when he's speaking of this opposition, it's quite clear that he is including Lois Roden as a part of this opposition from the beginning of his message, as he says. Another quote from page two of the same document. Let's say that I was all wrong in applying this terrible crime to Sister Roden. Has Sister Roden showed any one of you the error of our teaching? then why isn't she helping us with the truth? So you see, often people portray Lois Roden as kind of handing off the leadership to Vernon Howell. But clearly, according to Vernon Howell himself, Lois Roden was opposing what he was doing. Now, there's more in addition to a few written documents. In fact, Vernon Howell did not write much. There's only a few documents that he put together most of what we have from him is an audio recording. So I would like you to listen to a few clips wherein uh, Vernon Howell speaks quite plainly negatively toward who he calls Sister Rodin or Lois Rodin, the leader of the Branch Davidian movement. So listen to what he says. Sister Rodin says that she doesn't want anyone to think bad about me. If it had not been for her rebellion in the first place, no one would have had a biased opinion about me. You know what I'm saying? No one would have thought anything about me. Sister Rowan wants everyone to be established with her message. What's so interesting about that statement is that Vernon Howell clearly says that it was because of Lois Roden that there's this opposition to what he was doing. And in other words, she was the one who instigated that opposition. So that's very important to take note of. Listen to this next clip. This room acts like I'm just, you know, shooting with a water pistol or something, you know, it doesn't phase her. 
You know, thus said the Lord God. You know, so that's awful discouraging. That makes that makes you think, well, you know, great big sister Rodin and little bitty God. Of course, he's here portraying Lois Rodin in a very negative light, and um, I, of course, believe that he was misconstruing her character, but what's evident in this statement is that she was not thinking that what he had to say was all great. No, she viewed it as something absolutely not great. So let's look at the next statement now, which is even more clear. We find out that a message was to be given at the General Conference to exalt the Holy Spirit Mother by the seventh angel's messenger. We made special attempts to go to Sister Rhoda in Odessa to study with her to prepare for this event. But instead, she rebelled and did things her own way. So therefore, the Lord told us not to present the message, to wait. We find out in chapter 23 why the Lord told Elijah to wait. But there was a problem. Here you had an apostate first angel out there, an apostate second angel, and an apostate third angel. Sister Rhoden out there going round and round and round, passing out her message. How could we possibly have given the Holy Spirit message when the very message and messenger which we were to exalt before the General Conference was in opposition with us? You had Babylon, Babylon. The greatest extreme confusion. So that's what makes the church Tyrus. How come the church becomes like Tyrus, a merchant city? Chapter 23? Because you see, every time the Lord allows the scroll to unroll, the messengers of the past message don't want to give up the means. They don't want to give up the controls of the chariot. They don't want to give up the time. They don't want to follow God. They want to do it their own way now. That's why Sister Rowe want to do things her way. So that's why it says it should come to pass, verse 15, that Tyre can be forgotten 70 years. Hoshea says that God saw Israel like Tyrus. The church becomes like Tyrus when they don't progress with truth, Hosea says. And it says, sing is the hardest. So then in the 70 years, from 1915, the death of the third angel's messenger, to 1985, the apostasy of the final phase of the third angel's messenger, we find the situation that the final phase of the third angel was out there at that meeting, singing like a harlot, committing fornication, private interpretation. So this statement may be a little bit harder to understand without some sort of basic knowledge of Davidian theology, but anyone who's familiar with it even to a slight degree will understand that Lois Roden claimed to bear a repetition of what is known as the third angel's message based on Revelation 14, and she considered herself the third angel's messenger in its final phase. Well, in the statement that you just heard, Vernon Howell refers to her, the third angel's messenger, as a harlot and guilty of private interpretation. In other words, she was speaking not according to the inspiration of God, but her own private ideas and her own personal interpretations of the scripture. He's basically referring to her as uninspired. And of course, what is also quite revealing about this statement is he's saying, hey, you know, we couldn't go to this conference, the general conference. Uh, what he was referring to actually is the 1985 General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, which is a far larger body of religious people. And he wanted to go initially. He had, in fact, prophesied that he would go because it was 70 years from the death of Ellen White, um, who was the the uh, prophet and leader of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And he had been saying that he would be going to this general conference meeting in 1985 and present this message. But then he's saying that, oh, well, now we can't go. And the reason why 
he said they couldn't go is because the very woman who brought the message of the Holy Spirit, whom he was going to proclaim, was in opposition to him. You just heard it. He said that. And so all these ideas that, oh, well, Vernon Howell, David Koresh, was the leader of the Branch Davidians, and this is just what the Branch Davidians are all about, is not actually true. He was opposing the Branch Davidian leader and messenger and the message. And I don't have time to go into it in this video, but he actually told Lois Roden that, oh, she was supposed to stop teaching her message and printing her publications and so on. But of course she didn't because she believed that she had a message from God. So this, this really shows a break in thought and, in, and action between David Koresh and what he was doing and Lois wrote in what she was doing. And when I say a break, I don't mean to imply that they were working together and she supported his message and then stopped. Because as we see here, he even says that from the beginning, she opposed him. So this, though, isn't just um, a circumstance where you have two different claimed leaders who oppose each other within the same Branch Davidian movement. Now, actually, what took place is that, uh, at least in 1984, we don't know exactly when this took place, but at least by the end of 1984, Vernon Howell had moved his group to a place called Palestine, Texas, which is two hours from Waco. And he started uh, his own group called not Branch Davidians, or Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, but Davidian Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. And it operated with him as president in Palestine, Texas, two hours away from Waco, Texas, where Lois Roden operated as the president of the Branch Davidian movement. So two different movements with two different names, with two different headquarters, with two different presidents. This was the state of things from 1984 until 1986 when Lois Roden died. So the whole duration of David Koresh's message during the lifetime of Lois Roden was in opposition to Lois Roden and the Branch Davidians. Now, there's a, a booklet that David Koresh published in 1985 called Divided We Stand, Divided We Fall. And at the end of this booklet, uh, he gives the abbreviation for his own movement. So, DBDSDA, P.O. Box, 1846 Palestine, Texas. So, this of course is just a, a little bit of evidence just to show you that this was indeed the case. In addition to this though, uh, there's also audio recordings of of David Crash or Vernon Howell at the time, saying, Davidian, Branch Davidian, uh, Seventh-day Adventist, study tape one, and study tape two, and so on and so forth. So listen to this brief clip of him from a study from October 19, 1984. Davidian, Branch Davidian, Seventh-day Adventist, study tape one. Now, further evidence of the fact that Vernon Howell was the leader of another movement, aside from the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventist movement, is uh, a couple documents, one that is from Vernon Howell and one that is from Lois Roden, just a few months apart in 1985, wherein Vernon Howell claims to be the president of the Davidian Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, and Lois Roden claims to be the president of the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. Now, before I show you guys these documents, I just want to remind you that in me sharing this information with you, it's not to say, oh, look, there's this, this little squabble between two different sects over a name and, and so on and so forth. No, this isn't primarily about the name, but the name is an indication of something that happened. And as we will see, David Koresh, Vernon Howell, stole the Branch Davidian identity. What I'm trying to show you first is that from the beginning of his message and movement, it was not the same as the 
Branch Davidian movement. Now this is very important to recognize because of course if one thinks that oh well he was the Branch Davidian leader all the way along well then how could he have been the person to have stolen the identity? The very fact that he wasn't actually the leader of the Branch Davidians is what makes it possible for him to have stolen the identity because it was not his identity. And the reason for me going through all this again is to point out to you a continuing tragic state of affairs ever since 1993 that we need to put an end to. So let us look at this this first document. Uh, the first one is the Vernon Howell document. So it reads as follows. Before me, the undersigned authority on this day personally appeared Vernon W. Howell, who after being by me duly sworn, states that he is the president of the Davidian Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventist Association, and is in all things capable of making this affidavit that the statements contained in the foregoing instrument are true and correct. Signed, Vernon W. Howell. Of course, this is from the 10th day of June, A.D. 1985. Now let's look at the Lois Roden document. Before me, the undersigned authority on this day personally appeared Lois Roden, who, after being by me duly sworn, states that she is the president of the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventist Association and that she is authorized to make this affidavit. The statements contained in the foregoing motion for contempt are true and correct. Signed, Lois I. Roden. So, quite clearly, we have these two statements, one from March and one from June, in which, on the one hand, Vernon Howell claims to be the president of the Davidian Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. On the other hand, Lois Roden claims to be the president of the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. Clearly two different movements with two different names, as we've seen, two different addresses, and the messages of both leaders are in opposition to one another. So I don't believe that this is something that can just be overlooked as an insignificant fact. Next, now that I've established this difference, I want to now show you the, the time and the documentation for the fact that Vernon Howell did indeed steal the identity of the Branch Davidian movement. So, to see this, I want to um, show you and, and read to you from a document um, called Removal and Appointment of Trustee. Now, this is from 1987, after the death of Lois Roden. So, now Lois Roden is gone. The state of the movement is a little bit uncertain, that is, of the Branch Davidian movement. And George Roden, Lois Roden's son, had taken charge of the property there at New Mount Carmel Center, and um, and he was not really doing uh, the best job of taking care of things. He was actually having some mental health issues and so on. And there's a whole lot more to that history, which I won't go into in, in this video. But um, Essentially, what ended up happening in 1987 is there was literally a shootout between Vernon Howell and George Roden on New Mount Carmel Center. And as a result of what took place there with George's mental issues and so on, he ended up uh, being tried and he ended up actually in an insane asylum rather than in jail or, or something like that. Um, and then at that time, Vernon Howell took the opportunity to actually claim to be the president of the Branch Davidians and appoint himself as the trustee of the association in order to get New Mount Carmel Center. And that's what took place in 1987 and that is what this document is about. So if you look here at the document you notice that it says 
know all men by these presents, that I, Vernon Wayne Howell, of the County of Anderson, State of Texas, President of the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. Now, if you'll remember in the previous document, he was claiming just a couple years before to be the president of the Davidian Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, while Lois was the president of the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. But now that things have happened, uh, Lois Roden is now dead, George is now being taken away, well, he steps in, he takes the opportunity, and now he hides the fact that he was ruling or um, governing a separate movement under a separate name ever since 1983, and now asserts himself as the president of the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. Now on the next page of the same document he says, do hereby appoint myself, Vernon Wayne Howell of the County of Anderson, Texas, to the office of trustee of the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, an association constituting a church of the County of McLean, State of Texas, which trustee is to have and to hold all property of the church on behalf of the church, including, and then he goes on to give the description of the property there in Texas. So this clearly shows that even though Vernon Howell had not been the president of the Branch Davidians ever, ever up until this point where he made this claim, and also in this document I'll point out that he claims to be voted into presidency, which is against the constitution and bylaws of the Davidian Association ever since the days of Victor Hoddeff, as outlined in a document he drew up, Victor Hoddeff drew up, called the Leviticus of Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. So this shows that Vernon Howell did indeed commit identity theft of the corporate body of the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. And because of the state of things in the movement at the time, it, it, it ended up working in essence. Um, just before Lois Roden died, there was a lot that had taken place that went downhill. Um, many people had ended up splintering into different factions and so on. There weren't many people supporting Lois Roden at the time. And um, Vernon Howell, simply because he had somewhat of a following in Palestine, Texas, was able to pull this off and take over Mount Carmel Center and the Branch Davidian identity. Now, as time went on, Vernon Howell actually stopped using the Branch Davidian name. And this is actually apparent uh, from several different sources. The first of which I'm going to look at here is actually an FBI negotiation transcript known as Number 126. And it contains a transcript of a conversation uh, that took place on March 13, 1993. And in the description box below, you'll see there that I've placed links to several things. And one of the links is to the uh, transcript itself from the Texas State University. So you can go and, and read the whole thing. Uh, but I'm going to look at some relevant portions here in regard to the Branch Davidian identity. So this first part here is on page uh, 33 to 34 of this manuscript or this transcript. And it's a conversation primarily between Steve Schneider and Catherine Schroeder. Um, Steve Schneider was David Kresh's right-hand man, if you will, and he's speaking from inside of the compound. Uh, and He's there with David Kresh. And he's speaking on the phone to Catherine, and known in the transcript as Kathy. And she had just left the compound and had been interviewed by media. And she said some things that Vernon, or known at that time now, ever since 1990, as David Koresh, that he and Steve were unhappy with along with the others. So let's look now at this conversation. So Mr. Schneider, he says here, never received it, 
we were listening to the radio and we were David and I and the rest were quite unhappy with you because they stated you said you were our spokesperson. Kathy, I never said that. Mr. Schneider, and also you called us Koreshians, which isn't so, and Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, which is not so. So I mean, I don't know, Kathy, just be, you know, those things we've never... David has never called us that or said we were that. Pardon? Yeah, he said, uh, David even passed on you didn't need to salt your foot. So that's a, a statement now that uh, in the background, David Koresh is speaking to Steve Schneider and telling him to pass on something to Kathy. Now, going ahead in the conversation to uh, pages 57 to 59 of this transcript, Kathy says, I'm sorry about the DBDSDA, and when they asked me what my religion was, they couldn't even write it on the computer. Schneider, couldn't you put down a Bible student? Kathy, I did. I said Bible. Schneider, okay. Kathy, and they couldn't put it on the computer. Steve Schneider says, I see. Kathy, so we left it blank. Mr. Schneider, yeah, this whole business of being called Branch Davidians. We have not called ourselves that. That's something, Kathy, that, Steve again, Steve Schneider, Mark Brault labeled us with, so he's pointing out there's this guy, Mark Brault, and he had left the movement sometime before and had been vocal against it, and he's saying, oh, that's something that this other guy labeled us with. Kathy then says, that's, that's why I made the statement to begin with, because Perry told me we were, we were DBDSDA. Now, Perry, that's Perry Jones, and Perry Jones had actually been a part of the Branch Davidian movement and had left to follow Vernon Howell. So he actually, at one point, was a Branch Davidian, and then he became a Davidian Branch Davidian, DBDSDA. But at this point, Koresh and those with him are actually separating themselves both from the Branch Davidian name and the Davidian Branch Davidian name. And we'll get to what they actually uh, call themselves, although they didn't, you know, settle on a particular name or anything like that. Like they didn't incorporate with this particular label or anything like that. But they did refer to themselves by some sort of a name, which we'll get to. So continuing in the conversation, Steve Schneider says, Perry thought that from about six, seven years ago, and, and, Kathy, oh, well, that was wrong? Mr. Schneider, we, you've never heard David ever say, never, he's never said that. Kathy, I know, I've never heard David say that either. Okay, so we'll stop there as far as the transcript goes. Um, I'm not sure exactly the point at which uh, either Steve or Kathy joined the the following of, of David Kresh, but I know that during the siege, Kathy said that when she met Steve and David, David Kresh, was a few years before, so probably 1990 or perhaps even earlier, and evidently Steve Schneider was already with them. And so ever since 1990 at least, they had never heard David say that they were Branch Davidians or Davidian Branch Davidians or anything like that at all. They just simply didn't have that name. So this is really revealing in terms of the identity of the Koresh followers. And it makes one wonder, well, what about the Branch Davidians? Who are they? So now there's another thing I want you to actually watch. This is a, a short video clip from the first memorial. This is the 1994 memorial, a year after the siege. And um, one of Kresh's followers, a man by the name of David Thibodeau, gave a talk. And in this talk, he made the following revealing statement. This is what he had to say. Oh, by the way, I'd just like to say one thing about February 28th. I had no idea I was a Branch Davidian until February 28th. I thought I was a student of the Seven Seals. I was studying with all these great people I'd known for two and a half years. I had met Dave, 
Man, I never went around saying, hi, Dave Thibodeau, Branch Davidian, glad to know you. Hey, come out and study the Branch Davidian d doctrine and philosophy. No, it was never like that. It was a total shock to me when I hear on the news that the Branch Davidian compound has been raided by ATF agents. I was amazed. That was the first I heard of it, just to kind of give you some insight on this, this, this Branch Davidian thing. Okay, so here you have David Thibodeau, who had been following David Koresh for two and a half years, and he had never heard of it. He had no idea he was a Branch Davidian until February 28th. That's the day that the, the raid begun. And, um, I mean, this is really, really significant. You have Steve Schneider with Vernon Howell, or David Koresh himself, there with him, and they're denying the Branch Davidian name. You have David Thibodeau denying the Branch Davidian name. He says that they were called the Students of the Seven Seals. And other historians have recognized that that's the case, that they have referred to themselves as the Students of the Seven Seals or simply Bible students. So what's this whole Branch Davidian thing? And obviously there was a Branch Davidian movement and, and Crash at one point associated with it, you know, starting in 1981. But in 1983, again, he started his own movement, which by 1984 they were referring to themselves by the name Davidian Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. But then once you get into the 90s, they disassociate themselves even from that name. But, unfortunately, because of the theft, the identity theft in 1987, and because the property of New Mount Carmel Center belonged to the Branch Davidians, that name became attached to the movement to the Koresh movement. And ever since, people have associated the name Branch Davidian with David Koresh, his behavior, his teachings, the polygamy, the child abuse, the hoarding of weapons, and you know all these other things that people think of when they think of David Koresh and Branch Davidians. But the sad thing is, People shouldn't think of David Koresh and Branch Davidians and associate all these things with those terms. As we have seen, David Koresh was not the leader of the Branch Davidians. He took that name in 1987 in order to obtain New Mount Carmel Center, the property that was owned by the Branch Davidians, but within a few years he himself did not use that name to identify himself and his followers. The unknown victims of this story, the story that I'm telling you now, are those who are actually Branch Davidians, and even those who are just Davidians. Um, the Davidian movement is a broader movement um, that houses, if you will, the Branch Davidians. Uh, the Davidian movement started in 1929, as I mentioned earlier, and not all of those who followed Victor Hodef accepted Ben Roden's message in 1955. Ben Roden's message was called the Branch Message, and so the followers of Ben Roden uh, were known by the name Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, although of course they understood themselves as being a continuation of the Davidian movement starting in 1929. And so you have Davidians who reject the Branch Message, and then you have Branch Davidians who are actually Branch Davidians, but who did not accept the message of David Koresh. And there are Branch Davidians who did not accept his message. As we've seen, he didn't take over the Branch Davidian movement. He started his own movement, which was separate from the Branch Davidians. So there were those, few though they be, who were faithful to the message that Lois Roden brought to the end, and who continued on bearing a message. And I myself am a Branch Davidian. I've never believed in the message of David Koresh. Um, a good friend of mine uh, who is now deceased, his name was Doug Mitchell, he was a part of the Branch Movement ever since 1978. He never accepted David Koresh, and he actually became the president or leader of the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventist Movement in 1986 when Lois Roden died. And he and Vernon Howell, later David Koresh, never particularly got along, they, they didn't share beliefs, they didn't share a message together, anything like that. They were two separate movements. And um, unfortunately, Doug Mitchell spent the rest of his life trying to clarify this issue and preserve the identity 
of the branch David in Seventh day Adventists, but people did not listen to him. They, there just simply wasn't the interest because everyone's interested in the the big story of oh. Dave Crash and this this cult following and oh he has multiple wives and is abusing children and you know all these exciting things and then you have this voice over you know in the distance saying hey uh, actually they're not the Branch Davidians we're the Branch Davidians and people were simply too wrapped up in the other story and um, but here's the thing it's not just a matter of you know, me getting on and making this video and telling you guys, oh, by the way, Dave Koresh and his followers weren't really the Branch Davidians. We're the Branch Davidians and we don't believe in the same things that they did and we don't promote what they promoted and so on and so forth. And we just want our identity preserved. It's a lot bigger than that. There are thousands of Davidians worldwide. And ever since this siege in 1993, and ever since the the uh, media and, and others attach this Branch Davidian name, or simply even Davidian, to David Koresh. All Davidians and Branch Davidians have had their reputations blackened by that event. And it's not like people just view them negatively from a distance but are nice to them. No, Davidians are not treated well. Branch Davidians are not treated well. People, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Especially ever since this 1993 event, when the world views Branch Davidians as being followers of David Koresh, being cult members and people who would give up their wives to uh, this, this strange leader and people who would uh, tolerate child abuse and, and different things like that, people view it, of course, as a very negative thing. So all these Davidians and Branch Davidians who never had anything to do with David Koresh, who never followed him, who never believed in what he taught, all of a sudden get umbrellaed under this term Branch Davidian, which never actually applied rightfully to David Koresh. He stole that name in 1987 to get a plot of land. And now, ever since that time, Davidians are being persecuted in their churches even, you know, I myself, I have been publicly humiliated because of the reputation of the Branch Davidian name. I've been publicly slandered. I have been threatened. I've been physically dragged. I know many Davidians who have uh, gone through many different abusive circumstances. In fact, it's very difficult to find a Davidian who hasn't undergone some sort of abuse, again, whether psychologically, verbally, physically. I have friends who have had the police called on them. I have friends who have been ostracized and treated as though they were criminals because of this whole David Koresh circumstance when they had nothing to do with it. And, um, you know, it's sad. It continues on to this day. You know, I've seen children, I know children, who, because their parents are Davidians, and the Davidian name has been blackened by the reputation of David Koresh, They've been there in their churches, and the the teachers of the children's class in church services have refused to speak to or acknowledge these children. These are young kids, and they're being ignored in their in their churches and being socially isolated because their parents are Davidians, and people think that being a Davidian is associated with David Koresh. This identity theft is not without damage. I'm sure that you all recognize that identity theft for an individual can often be very damaging because if someone steals your identity, really imagine what this would be like. If someone stole your identity and then went and committed crimes and atrocities in your name, and then you have to go through the rest of your life, unless you're vindicated, but even so, it's hard to remove a, a, a stain. You have to go through the rest of your life with people viewing you with suspicion, with negativity, socially isolating you, accusing you, depending on what you did, like if you were, uh, if you had your identity stolen and someone did something like child abuse, you may have people who will act out violently toward you. And that is exactly what happens with Davidians and Branch Davidians, 
again, who have never had anything to do with David Koresh, but we're talking about people who have never believed in what David Koresh taught, people who don't even know what David Koresh taught, and who are literally being hit, being uh, threatened, being isolated, and all these things that are happening to, to thousands of people because of this, this lie. The lie that David Koresh was the leader of the Branch Davidians and that his followers were the Branch Davidians. So I hope that you see that this isn't just some trivial dispute over a name, Branch Davidian. No, and, and to be honest, I do want people to recognize the difference because of vindicating the name and message of the Branch Davidian uh, people. Because, hey, as a Branch Davidian, I believe that I have something important to say to the world. That there is a message that we as Branch Davidians do have that we want to proclaim. And it is true that David Koresh and his activities and the fact that he stole the Branch Davidian identity in 1987, that has basically closed off the ears of the world to hearing what we have to say. But it's more than that, you know? <laughs> like, seriously, aside from that, there are people who are being hurt physically, emotionally, mentally. And some of them are just innocent children who have no idea why people are treating them so negatively. So this is a tragedy that has been ongoing now for the past 24 years. And actually, the identity was stolen even before then. And it did have these negative effects from 1987 onward. Uh, but of course, 1993 is when it went worldwide. Um, so for those of you who look back on that 1993 event and you see the tragedy and you wish that you could have done something to prevent those children from getting burned in the fire, to prevent that whole siege from ending how it did, today there's another tragedy that is ongoing still and people are being abused as a result and um, you know there's something that you can do to help and what you can do is to spread the truth of this identity theft to try and clear the record you know you can share this video you can tell people the truth of what happened if people say oh you know David Crash and the Branch Davidians you can kindly correct them and say well actually you know what I used to think that David Koresh was the leader of the Branch Davidians too, but it turns out that that's not the case. He actually stole the identity, and there's a whole community of people who are even to this day being hurt because of this misconception. So please, anyone who cares for, for justice and for the end of tragedy, I, I do ask you to please spread the news of this in order to bring an end, hopefully, to the abuse that has been going on for all these years. So, there's actually a lot more on this subject. Uh, Doug Mitchell, who I mentioned earlier, wrote a book explaining these same facts that I'm talking about, but uh, it's far more thorough. He, he gives his personal experience living through these events and um, really evidences the fact that David Koresh did indeed steal the identity of the Branch Davidians and that it has caused a lot of damage. It's not a, a, just a trivial fact of history. Uh, so his book is called The Warfare of Vernon Howell, a.k.a. David Kresh and Others Against the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. I really recommend that you read it. There's a link in the description box. And also, there's another link there to an interview with Doug Mitchell concerning these same things, which I really recommend that you check out. It won't take much of your time to do so. Um, also, if you want to know who we really are as Branch Davidians, what we believe, what we stand for, and um, really our identity, please check out our website. It is bdsda.com. Of course, BDSDA stands for Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. And uh, I really recommend reading our short write-up on our homepage, which explains 
our foundation and our purpose and also if you check out our FAQ page there is a lot of information there as to what we really stand for who we are what is our identity so please do check those things out and uh, thank you for taking the time to watch this video I hope that you can see now that it is so important and above all I, I just have to ask again that you please do try in whatever way to spread the news to right this wrong and to remedy this horrible situation that has been ongoing for all these years so thank you very much